player base in their right. draft. I think you don't want to be the ones reacting or responding in terms of draft. If you're drafting the counter pick, then in the end result is often your draft doesn't come together, have a clear like win condition to take the game. So first priority should always be drafting around what you want to be playing, and secondary should be counter picking, or your counter pick should be your bands more than anything. Right. All right. Well, we are going to see this time. I mean, basically, Flit Secret going ahead and taking that Doom on the Radiant side. The band's coming in. This time we do see the Invoker being banned out. Not going to be let through in this draft phase. So that'll let Bounty, th bounty through? They don't, on... they don't play Bounty that often, though. Ooh, that could be really abusable for, for Secret, then. If they don't pick it, then Secret gets potentially two top two heroes. They fulfill much of the same role, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of hard to do both, definitely. Yeah. But you could do offlane Doom. Mm -hmm. All right, well... Statistically speaking, Ehome perhaps in a little bit of danger in how they have to adapt from the first phase right away in game two. You know, looking at Ehome's prior draft style, they banned Bounty Hunter in about 90% of their games, but they haven't picked it up. Well, surely a lot of teams going into this tournament had some bounty, anti bounty strats. Like, if you got a top hero like that, you figure out a way to beat them, and then you let it squeeze through sometime, maybe. Right. The, their anti bounty strat is to pick Bounty Hunter this time. Okay. Um, and it, it's a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean, left it open, take it for themselves. The Death Prophet does return for E-Home. I like the synergy. Uh, bounty track on heroes makes Death Prophet run even faster, so um, if the stuns are a bit weak, coming out of secret can be very survivable for her. I think this time they have much better kill potential, uh, too, in the mid lane, even starting at level 1 with the Spirit Siphon and just a, a Wind Walk with the Orb of Venom. Like, I think last game... Doom can run around with Inf Infernal Blade, but it was Secret that made the first move. I think a lot of it just dictates about which support actually pressures the lane first. I do kind of like Doom as a DP counter as well. It's not just about preventing her exorcism co from coming out, but um, his uh, Infernal Blade does percentage-based damage, and she usually buys a lot of HP items, so can be really nice scaling into the late game as well. They counter have... by no HP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent be as choice. squishy as possible as Death Prophet. That's the <laughs> just all of Asian meta. And mana, I guess. <laughs> Get hood resistance. Yeah. Just go okay. Okay. It's hood. pure damage, isn't it? The Infernal Blade. Infernal Blade's yeah. magic. Mag yeah. Is it? Infernal okay. Blade is magic. Triple cloak. <laughs> 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 the pure, the hardest counter there is. I am picked up by Secret again. No surprise there. I think for Secret, the key thing, again, not to be too greedy. You're versing a Bounty Hunter. There's going to be this pressure onto the mid lane with Bounty plus Death Prophet. Make sure you have just a solid support duo. You don't have three cores. You all need some farm. You want to have at least one of your core players on a hero that can get involved early, take fights, move around the map. But you don't want to have three very static passive farming lanes. It is kind of interesting to see Puppy potentially playing the Doom, though, because he usually does play very sacrificial roles. And like I talked about in the last game, um, Lion does usually get lane farm with Envy switching to the jungle. But will he continue to buy wards? Normally it would be Puppy buying it. It might, might adjust their early game play style a bit. Last game they didn't do that at all. They was just all about killing heroes. They really didn't right. worry about... They're like, We're, we don't even need a Blink Dagger. We just need to get <laughs> kills and potentially 22 of them and limit your deaths below 4 and that usually wins games. <laughs> yeah. Except when you're throwing games. Yeah, it, it can come back, you never know. Yeah, well, so far so good though. Do you think there's still going to be the same fear from Ehome against the likes of the Chenna and the Enchant? I mean, last time there was a huge focus, the Wisp ban from the first one, and then going with the Enchant and the Chen right away. Do you expect to see that this time, or do you think Ehome's going to just kind of let it slide and see what else they can pick up for themselves? In the past, you have you have Bounty Hunter, you're not afraid of the Chen or the Enchantress, but we're seeing the new camps being added so that the, the Chen and the Enchantress can often play keep away, so there may be a little bit of worry. I think the Chen perhaps a bit scarier just because it's more Puppy's signature hero, but... I think given the fact you have Bounty, they're just not going to worry too much about the junglers. Yeah, I think they could do either, honestly. I don't think it's a big deal. Um, Universe can play uh, Enchantress offlane. It could hypothetically be yeah, Puppy, true. and they could put Doom on Universe. Um, creeps harassing the mid lane. Death Prophet's fairly susceptible to that, especially being on the dire side. You can easily just wrap it around, whereas ganking Radiant mid is a little bit harder with the creeps. All right, well, Enchant first up on the ban chopping block. Yeah, Witch Doctor being banned out for Team Secret, they're, I think they're scared of maybe their uh, offlane being a little bit too weak, and by 
to by uh, the same token, they want to ban out the strong support so that Universe can have an easier time there. Of course, they could put Doom there, but I think that Witch Doctor and Venge are probably the two strongest zoning supports, uh, and this frees up Bounty Hunter to help out the Death Prophet a little bit more. So they want to secure at least two or three lanes, and Team Secret are just make making to look their off lane much much stronger than you home safe lane. It's a good idea too, because if, if your off lane is not easy to kill, like if Secret has a survival off lane, that means he'll put more pressure on the carry, which is going to force more rotations that way. So even if Universe doesn't necessarily rotate that much, just forcing the supports to be there to zone him is going to create less pressure on the map, and it's going to make it easier to predict Bounty Hunter. Whereas if Bounty Hunter can go wherever he wants, like let's say Universe has to fall back into the jungle, then it makes it easier for Ehome to play their game. So limiting their, their strong supports, uh, at least in terms of laning, could be a big advantage that Secret can exploit. All right, well, the Chen also being taken out, so that not, no change there for Ehome. And now back to rounding out their own roster, seeing what their strengths are going into game number two against Secret. Very patient picking this tournament, actually. Yeah. I feel like it normally goes a bit faster. Um, <laughs> although it is the start of the tournament, usually you'll see the meta definitely change over from the start to the end. But will it change that much in two days? That's the real question. <laughs> yeah, not too much time, not too many games. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Very rarely will that be picked up unless there's a Dark Seer. Um, I've been kind of saying it since the hero came out. It's okay. It's not amazing. It has some good aspects to it. It's pretty good with Death Prophet because you can amplify the heal she does. But Even if Death Prophet's going to die, it keeps her life that extra bit longer to maximize her exorcism dam damage yeah. output too. But honestly, she can heal through so much yeah. just with Spirit Siphon plus a couple nukes on Oracle. It makes a big difference. Um, it does mean they have like no stuns, no control right now. Something they're going to have to remedy with their offlaner or their support. Yeah, and you can stop damage with Fate's Edict, uh, whether that's Lion or whatever. So it's it's definitely a good combo with Death Prophet. But past that, I feel like Oracle does have a lot of issues. Kind of weak at ganking. Um, you're fairly item independent. You can't farm super fast unless you're occasionally pushing lanes with Purifying Flames. So sometimes it's a little hard to get farm. They make up for that with uh, Bounty Hunter, though. So if they do get fight wins, they're going to be in a really good spot. But I'm a little unsure if they can get to that point. Yeah. I'm always dubious of Oracle. It has one of the, the worst win rates of any commonly picked hero. It's something like down like 43, 44% on the current patch. And that's, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't really play towards the tempo of the patch where it's yeah. just a passive, passive laning support. Like heroes, other heroes that fit that role, like Witch Doctor just get a bit more, more done. They have an ultimate with a bit more like firepower to them. Oracle is just purely defensive in nature. I see her like pretty successfully when they used like the nuke into Fortunes and into another nuke and then combined with like a Bounty Hunter Shuriken. I think that's like a lot of front loaded damage. That's very, very difficult to prevent. Like Doom actually suffers against that sort of a uh, sort of burst heavy lineup where you can't actually scorch the earth because you're just dead in that uh, time frame. Also, it duels as like a defensive toolkit for the Death Prophet. Like we already mentioned, yeah. generally it's like Avenge or uh, Winter Wyvern like we saw last game, but it's I think it can be played very, very offensively. And one other thing that the Oracle pick does do is it, it sort of prevents against a secret Batrider. It's one of the really good solutions from a support aspect that counters Lasso. You can cast ulti, you can cast swap, for example, Venge is gone. Maybe that's the path they're going with Oracle I there. See. Or the Doxy you mentioned. You said you normally see Oracle yeah. like after a Doxy, and that's one of the universe's best heroes. So. Yeah. I mean, Beastmaster is still better in my opinion at the moment. Vision, ganking, uh, once they get a gem it'll be way easier to find Bounty Hunter when they're looking through jungles. Even finding Oracle, because often Oracle's role in a team fight is to sit back in fog, not get caught out, so make sure you get the false promise on your death profit. If yeah. you catch the Oracle, even if you're just forcing Oracle to false promise himself, then you, you're in a good position in terms mm -hmm. of the team fight. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, now things change a bit. Uh, so with the tiny pick, be tiny versus Beastmaster in lane. Um, that's a little. That's that's kind of good for Beastmaster, I would say. Um, unless the bounty gets behind you and lets them catch up. But. It's, a, it's a ton of burst, though. Like all their heroes have just lots and lots of lots of lots and lots of bursts. I wonder if it's going to be Lanum on the tiny though. Usually Eleven plays it, but it looks like he's probably going to be the or sorry, Old Chicken plays it, but he's going to be on a Death Prophet. It seems. Ten seconds remaining. Um, Oracle pretty good against Lanum as well. He can remove the disables there. Um. It really feels like Ehome when I hit this like mid-game timing where they're just going to keep going for kills, use the burst damage that Ben talked about to just keep finding pickoff after pickoff. Alright. Well, Quap coming out for Secret. I mean, does it? Is there any fear 
that on Ehome's end that maybe it's a little bit too much, you know, all their eggs in one basket going with the strap so far? It can be. If they get behind and Secret has more tankiness than their burst can deal with, then they just lose. Like, track gold, man. Well, <laughs> that's if you can kill them. Yeah, you get track gold to get kills. Right. The only hero they have right now to get kills is really Tiny. So if Tiny, like, has a bad stat and gets a late blink dagger, I feel like they're in all, all kinds of trouble. Unless but. Oracle, Bounty Hunter do some amazing things. Yeah. It's possible, but they're also now lacking disables, which is one reason I think they picked up the Quap. Because no matter where the Bounty shows up, if Quap has ulti, you're probably going to be able to kill the Bounty Hunter in the early game. So they will get some return kills. Not to mention she can jump on the Oracle in the back line, force him to do stuff uh, to Quap either nuking or trying to save himself. and. It's going to give them some much needed mobility. They've actually got really good mobility on Secret at the moment, way more than what Ehome has. They also have very self-sufficient heroes. This way, Doom can, you know, kind of just stay in the jungle without worrying too much about the lanes. Like, having a silence on a Death Prophet is not going to come until way later, so Queen of Pain should be, you know, scot-free for first three or four levels. Beastmaster, one of the strongest offplaners in the game right now, can easily go to the jungle, so th this Doom doesn't really have to worry about protecting his wow. lanes. <laughs> wow, that's a, a Lanham used to play this hero a lot back in the, the DK days. I mean, as he, a support. He, he even picked it a couple times in uh, the previous version of E-Home at, yes. at the Major. They picked a lot of Abaddon and Tree and stuff like that. So They would even run it in that E-Home team as, sometimes as an offliner, which is what we're going to be seeing here. This pick... I, I like a lot. Room it, disables. But it, it overlaps with the Oracle a bit? I, I, is that like, a bad thing? I mean, yeah, I mean it's just more insurance, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You can pump out Death Coils on like a 6 second cooldown. That's a 500 HP heal on your core every 6 seconds. Like, he, I, I could, you can even justify maxing or missed coil on a bad in this game. They still cannot afford to fall behind. If, but if they get like a good start, they get yeah. 5 many taking down Aura. towers, I feel like they're going to be in a good position. Yeah, I agree. All right, meanwhile, Secret rounding it out with OG. We talked a lot about E-Home. I mean, obviously, the focus on them is trying to bring it back. Quick thoughts on Secret's roster. I mean, do you think they're pretty happy? I mean, it's just a matter of, hey, if we play our best, we're going to win. They got a comfort pick OD for, for our yeah, TC as their last pick. They're changing things up, though. We see EE on the Queen of Pain. This isn't something that we've seen for a very long time. I, think I would probably say... Venture to say back when he was on Cloud9. So okay. they're exploring... Yeah. Much different strategies. Well, only problem with Secret's picks is they got every hero they wanted, pretty much. So it might turn out bad. Sometimes that's an issue. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very true. <laughs> you got to watch out a little bit, getting too comfortable, perhaps. But right now, Secret leading 1-0. Eho getting that insurance with the Abana in the last pick. See if they can pick up a win to go to game number three. Again, Eho fighting for their last, or life, rather, in this one game. Let's find out as we go to the game with our commentators. Five seconds remaining. Time and time again, we've seen teams. Teams, when their backs are against the wall, they'll throw us a curveball, and sure enough, a lot of Lanham Abaddon coming out from E Home is definitely something to switch it up. Jacob, uh, how you feeling about this? I'm excited to see how they're going to lane this as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's, it's not just a, the, the tiny Abaddon play, but that ties into how they're going to lane it. I sort of think that you just set things kind of standard. You can even go for safe lane tiny uh, and just offline the uh, abandoned and have the bounty hunter roam around. There, with the tiny, you have some crowd control. You've got the instant lockdown that we saw was so necessary. But I mean, secret. The beastmaster is going to have a rough time just because of the abaddon. I'm not really sure. Look at this. They're already oh. cutting down the trees. So, old eleven. The plan is here to pull that offlane camp. Toss one of the creeps, the big creep preferably, into the creep wave to pull it in. This will be a, a nice abuse of this offlane camp that we haven't seen too many players take advantage of. Yeah, so what you're saying is it's an offlane tiny, he has the boots first and he's gonna go down and, and just remove the creep wave in its entirety. Yeah, and that's a safe lane uh, abaddon, which is something I don't see very frequently, if at all. So we're in for a treat, how are they gonna kill him? It's gonna be hard, but I mean, even the death pro like those two cores are gonna be so difficult to kill in this game, right? Between all the sustain that Ehome has. Yeah, but for sure. But the problem is just the, the damage output, right? Yeah. And the control. Don't really. Ehome just start running at secret here in the very first fight over the battle room. Nice double impale from Pilot. I already set things up right. They did get the battle room. They might even get the first one as well. Our core. He doesn't have a prayer getting out of that one alive with the spirit siphon slowing him down. Secret took the fight and they lost. Ehome already in a good position in this game number two. And they actually got both boundary rooms as well. 
I think I saw from Nahaz or something like that, it was 60% if you got both the bounty runes because of how strong it is, right? Mm -hmm. You're able to just set up two lanes at once. As a result, and your mid laner is going to be in a significantly worse position. Well, the 11, not a bad rider, but he'll still cut behind the tier 1 tower and pick up the creep wave, knowing that the secret supports wouldn't be there to stop him. I'm going to go for this dual lane, too. The top. So this is probably the right idea, right? In order to deal with the idea of the Tiny being able to pull via tosses, they actually run sort of an aggro lane and put some pressure on the Abaddon relatively early. Yeah, I think this is actually a pretty decent idea just because it also forces the Bounty Hunter up here and your Beastmaster should do fine at bottom, especially since it's universe. Kind of like the king of one-on-ones in the off lane. As he already has a Quelling Blade, the Tiny does have a decent amount of base damage, but the downside is that this Tiny expected to play against three heroes, so he doesn't really have that stat-heavy of a build, not even having a salve, whereas uh, the Beastmaster are fully prepped for this one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah, the Star Shield coming in, making that difference as well, in, in armor as well, so every every hit they trade will always go in universe favor. There is, of course, the Bounty Hunter. Why Ice 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 needs to help out Old Eleven here. They are going to throw out that Avalanche, finally and get a couple more right clicks in, but uh, just doesn't some seem like they're going to be able to do this. They still have the toss, but that would be a dangerous play, trying to toss the Bounty Hunter into that tier 1 tower range. So, Universe does get back, pops a healing south. Still be good for this lane. Not a lot of opportunity so far for either team. It's just the Bounty Hunter trying to be as annoying and pesky as possible as the Queen of Pain not even going to go for the level of the Shadow Strike, opting not to any sort of hits with the Death Prophet is the Spirit Siphon is so good. CS game is looking a bit better for Secret with the Queen of Pain getting so much farm in the top lane and now find her generation rune. Starts heading toward mid. Denied. I mean without IO 39% win rate, not even very good. Especially offlane tiny, something that we don't see very frequently. He is picking up a good amount of levels though, old eleven. Then again, what is the win rate for Sensitz when an Abaddon is carry? That's I, what I want to know. Yeah, that's even more, even more of a rare sight. This is the first time I'm casting it, anyways. Have to harken back to the uh, the times where Loda was playing it. Yeah, it's been like that. Quite been, a long time. It's been a while. I'm especially interested in seeing how it, it combos in, into the mid game with the Oracle. Are we going to see this kind of new imbalance where you just can't kill anything? I mean, I think that's the game plan, right? Is Ehome want to be able to pump up the cores, make it really difficult for anybody to die and just run it secret repeatedly? Use the Abaddon to make sure that the Doom doesn't really do a lot. The Abaddon can't really die to the Doom either, just because you can. You always have to borrow time, right? So you're in an okay position, and if anybody else gets uh, doomed, you can just Aphotic Shield repeatedly. And you've got the Arc Warden, but we have seen, or the Oracle. And we we have seen, though, when you put too much into just keeping those two cores alive and not picking that many Disables, that's kind of the trap that uh, Secret themselves fell into yesterday. Which kind of leads us into perhaps Old Eleven must have a good laning phase for him to be much more of a factor, for him to be able to output enough damage to make up for the heavy, heavy sustain that Ehome invested in. Yeah, because of the support from the Bounty Hunter, he's he's fine for, so far, and he gets to uh, to control the rune as well. He's gonna go for Universe here. He's gonna be able to easily land this Avalanche. Just goes for the toss, straight upwards. He's gonna try and run him down underneath his tier one tower. Does have the haste rune, it should be easily enough, and will end up going down underneath the tower, but it's still fine, claiming the experience or um, kill on the Beastmaster. It's really all he was looking for there. Wrap around here behind old chicken. Two supports. Popping their head out, realizing that old chicken is already far enough back. The gank not going to be successful. And they can feel free to leave Artur alone at this top lane. Not a whole lot that they can do to this top lane. That's the one downside of the Abaddon carry is that he doesn't have the best kill potential whatsoever. Like, what are you going to do? You're just going to run at them? He can always just astral himself. Uh, killing mid is going to be difficult because of the fact that it's the Queen of Pain. So if you just look at the layout of the map, it's pretty much this Beastmaster that I think Ehome want to take advantage of. Do you expect him to uh, to ma max miscoil over the Curse of Avernus? Uh, I still think Curse of Avernus is so good. Just in 
because when you want to hit towers as well, and I think this is meant to be kind of a fighting core, it's a lot better than a mist coil is. And then with, with the lag of the sables, they'll take all the slow they can get. Yeah, exactly. Bottom lane, ice, ice, ice. Is setting up. This does seem to kind of be a trend. You you brought it up, and I kind of want to hit back on it. The the fact that Bounty Hunter picked up in the draft ends up at the end of the draft being left with essentially only one lane that he can really put pressure on. It feels like uh, it's really obvious to read the Bounty Hunter's movements when uh, you shore up two of your lanes so much. Alternatively, he could go top and try to mess with the OD, but there's no guarantee of a kill there, especially with uh, Puppy and Pilot Dead roaming around. So I think this is just the higher percentage uh, kind of harassment that they can make work and Eternal Envy is going to take the top DD rune. Wins the foot race unknowingly against Ice Ice Ice. But they, they must have known this going into this game that they are heavily reliant on levels as you see top lane. Ben Rear is going to be run down by Puppy. He doesn't care. They know that Ehome are unlikely going to be able to TP and uh, really punish this one, but they're in so deep and it took them a really long time to actually kill Ben Rear. Now they get the hex on the old bottom. They're actually going to be able to burst it down with the ultimate to keep on the Embodied Shield, but it doesn't matter. One more right click and he finishes them off. They're underneath deep, underneath this tower. Old 11 is here with an extra bit of revenge. They claim one core kill and looks like should be able to run down Pylai Die as well. He's out of options. He's just buying more and more time as a game of Ring Around the Rosie commences but it has to end eventually. Still, they managed to be able to pick up the kill on the OD as RTZ is going to go down into the tower. The Tiny gets a lot of gold out of that. Uh, as a result of that rotation, he's going to pick up his little 7. And that burst damage is quite a lot. Is They're going to sandwich Puppy. Ice, 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 and a TPN might be able to get some sort of return fire here. Old 11 not going to be saved, but they do get the turnaround kill on a Puppy and start right-clicking Universe, but I think he realizes he can win this. Even if it is 1v2, he's got some extra backup with our TZ. So the good trade-off here is that the Bounty Hunter is getting some, some level and of course farm as well. He's almost 6 and once they get that level 6, as well as 6 on the Abaddon, they probably want to start taking these fights. Uh, he's almost there! An Astral Imprisonment, such a short range. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to point out, is that even though it's just 2 for 2 uh, trade-offs in these engagements, Ice 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 is picking up so many levels, he's already going to hit uh, his level 6 at 8 minutes. I think last game when we were talking amongst ourselves, we were saying even at 10 minutes if you were to pick up, if you were to pick up the level 6 track uh, on the Bounty Hunter, you'd still be in a really good position. And for him to have it this early on, with the Trinkle Boots as well, already having the Headdress, a much more successful game for Ice Ice Ice. Which means our first rotation of the Bounty Hunter with this smoke. I'm presuming he's going to be uh, joining someone else. It looks like the Oracle for the time being. They're going to head to the mid lane where currently Ehome are trying to put some pressure on that tier 1 tower. It's not quite enough to take it though, only bringing it down to half health. Yeah, I think Old Chicken wishes he had mana so he could clear out the creep wave real fast and go hit the tower with, with Tiny standing. Ready for the uh, TP in though, Old Eleven. And they want to see if they can uh, get this surprise jump on somebody. But at the same time, Puppy and the rest of Secret are beginning to close in on this mid lane, hoping to be able to punish E-Home for sitting so far forward. Old 11 is actually in a kind of a nasty spot. He does get spotted out here. Ice 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 is going to be able to help him out, but it might be too late. The Prime Lord goes down and Old 11 is definitely dead. Team Secrets. They don't stumble into that tiny positioning and end up being able to uh, scout him out and punish him for being so far forward. Yeah, and Pilot Light Die desperately needs levels in this game. 0, 1, and 2 hasn't really been able to accomplish nearly as much as the support duo on the other side is Ice 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 just throwing out tracks. And Secret already going for this mid tower is this aggressive blink forward. Ben Rear tries to save himself, but of course that's pure damage from RTZ. Ice 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 is going to be the next target, already impaled up. Sonic Wave goes out, they just pop him. He gets off the Shuriken, but it doesn't seem to be enough. Old Chicken can't really stop and win this fight without the extra system, as Lanham isn't going to be able to help him out. Looks like Old Eleven gets the toss up in the air, but it's not enough to kill the OD, while Lanham is eventually going to take out from this Doom, and Old Chicken is just being kited around. The OD, who did not die to the tiny, turns around and kills him instead, and e home. They lost everyone in that fight. Yeah, that, that's the problem with this with this lineup from me home. They don't have any control at all, especially not with the tiny being down. And then on top of that, the, the doom going on off on the Abaddon, and of course being able to astral him had he had an ultimate up. It's just it's almost too easy for Secret to just do whatever they please in these team fights. Yeah, what's important to remember about track kills is first you actually have to get the kills. It's not nearly enough to just have this hero kind of just walk around. 
uh, throw out tracks. You want to at least have somewhat even engagements, but Secret not giving up a single kill makes and, that And they were prepared for the bounty hunter with the sentry ward as well. Yeah. He went down to the tower. Point. Like, this is... I mean, the game is still in its infancy. Nothing has really been uh, too definitive quite yet. Secret have taken some control, but Ehome could just as easily turn things around. They have a lot of burst damage coming their way, and all it takes is two or three track kills. Or perhaps, uh, well, that could be led into by a bad initiation from uh, Secret. They're looking to be able to get some sort of primal roar kill, but they do have a lot of now. They pop out of their whole Ehome, hoping to be able to get somebody here, but they're missing everything. Nothing claimed there from Ehome. We talked about the lack of disable. Shuriken not going to go out. Ice 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 is still trying to hunt here. Ehome, they can overrun the tier 1 tower, but it doesn't mean much if they don't actually get any hero kills. Pylai Dai is even going to be able to TP out. No track kills whatsoever. Secret are not giving up anything for free. You can just see how, how desperate Ehome is to, to engage and get in on them. Passing by the tower, just running at them, but there's nothing to do with. Tiny doesn't get off an avalanche. There's just no way of catching them. He doesn't even have a, a disabled hero to toss in on them. Yeah, that's what I was going to point out too, is I was looking at this lineup and thinking, who does he even toss? Like, does it even matter? Maybe he tosses the Abaddon in and he gets a few hits of the Curse of Avernus. Maybe that's your best option here at this rate, but... Uh, I, this just does not look like the... Evil. Oh, don't forget Ice Ice Ice! A short memory there as that counter ward catches him out once again. And Ehome, in these last two games, they just kind of look out of sorts right now. And it doesn't even feel like Secret is playing exceptionally, it's just Ehome are being a little bit sloppier than I'm used to them being. Eternal Envy. There's a nice little one inch blink there, just to be able to recover some mana from Arteezy's aura. Lost them. I, I think Ehome realized that they've lost way too much ground at this point. They can't really take a straight up fight. So not trying to defend that tier two. Lonham's just going for the split push at bottom lane. Yeah, these two, these two games have just shown so far that, that Ehome just... I question both their team play and their strategy. Their picks is completely off the wall. And that was something I loved about them in Frankfurt, that they just went with their own style. But it was also something where they it, it had a lot of synergy and it made a lot of sense. They could put on this early early game aggression and take it to the other teams. With these lineups, it's it's like they insist on picking the support that is a saving saving support. You know, it, it, it can go in and heal or keep them alive and so forth. But it has no real damage output. And this this lineup is just all over the place. With another smoke and potentially another failed initiation from Ehome is secret. They're just tracking it back here. Old Eleven is going to go for the toss forward here on the bounty hunter. This impale. Highlight die. Oh, turn around here for Eternal Levy. Gets a big sonic wave. The sound falls him up. They're going to try and track down Eternal Levy as much as possible. They just can't keep him one place. Now the Terra. Arcazi drops a hammer. Able to take out two ones. The only surviving member, but he's losing intelligence and losing it faster than you can even see. Highlight die. He finally goes down, but it doesn't really matter. He trades away his life for a guaranteed kill on Old Chicken. A one for five exchange. And secrets seem unstoppable, just like game number one. To add insult to injury, they didn't even get a track kill for that one kill. So even then, I don't even know how you justify that if you're on the side of Ehome right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you don't. Four kills, giving up that. That's, it's, it's just a, a display of what we just saw in the bottom lane. Them running at them and having nothing to catch them with. The Avalanche didn't hit again, and just nothing they can really do to, to keep Secret in this place. They have a Queen of Pain that blinks around freely. There's not going to be any point in time of this game where this Queen of Pain is going to feel threatened. Yeah, she has so much HP from the drums too, and uh, something pretty funny is that they took our advice, they tried to toss the Janata bounty hunter <laughs> to maybe set things up, but... What are, what are you going to do against it? Uh, I mean, the posterity of that statement alone just describes what this strategy can and cannot do. Yeah, the situation does not look good for Ehome right now, is they just don't have that instant jump that they need to maybe start a decent fight for themselves. Secret staying relatively huddled up here around the mid lane, Pylaitai. Always sitting behind Eternal Levy, being his guardian angel, waiting for a potential initiation from Ehome that he can respond to. But Ehome, all they're doing is just scouting out the Radiant Jungle. Eternal Levy is going to come in with his haste rune. Silence doesn't mean much. You've got 522 movement speed, so Eternal Levy just keeps on running at them. Spirit Siphon, easily cut off there. And Eternal Envy just feels like he's kind of toying with Ehome because he knows there's no hard disables to make him uh, fearful. Went for a Hood of Defiance so that he can easily survive through Tiny knowing that there's no other disable. Puffy's going to be a target here. They will be able to slow him down. Puffy is going to be eaten alive here by the Exorcism. 
the track, bounces over to Eternal Envy and Secret. So I guess that's the uh, the only pseudo disable they have except for Tiny options end. Yeah, it's not the most reliable thing and as the game progresses, it might not be what you exactly want to do, but still, a kill is a kill at a point like this and aggressively jumps forward. jumps forward. Prismant with the exorcism still out. Old Chicken may be able to heal himself soon. Gets off the silence onto Eternal Envy. The roar comes out, going on to Fenrir. Immediately taken off with the Aquatic Shield. Now they have the Oracle save, but it might not be enough as a huge Sonic Wave hits. And it's only going to be Lonim and Death Prophet who are able to keep themselves relatively healthy. Lonim again just being kited around time and time again. Ice 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 battling up against Eternal Envy, but he knows this is a fight he just can't win. Has to run himself away while the OD is able to get Death Prophet. And as he's so very found at this point, he's got a blink dagger, the drums of endurance, very close to a veil of discord. I mean, when you look at the fights. Okay. Okay! Arteezy! Says you want to try and walk away from that one ice, ice, ice. That Take the ultimate. 75 in stolen. You're not going to fight that <laughs> hero. And the crazy part is that in some ways, uh, whenever the OD sees the Abaddon, he's like, I'm very happy about this. Even yeah. with your ultimate pipe pop, I don't care. I'll heal you to full <laughs> as long as I steal like 40 int. Mm -hmm. top tower is under attack. Yeah, we're seeing in many of these fights, the ultimate isn't even needed for a secret to just be able to run over Ehome. I need 200 off his blink dagger still. There is a mechanism up on the uh, bounty now, however. I guess that adds some flavor to your team fights and makes you a little bit more tanky, but... I still think their primary problem is they just can't burst anybody down. Secret almost always get all of their abilities off as a result of these fights. You have to make this fight 4v5 if you're E-Home, almost instantly. The only heroes that you can really do that to are the Lion or the Doom, but we saw how hard it was for them to lock down Puppy to begin with. A full out pipe for Eternal Envy. He's going to make sure he never gives up a track kill to E-Home. Not your typical Queen of Pain build. Yeah, I guess he just thinks that they don't really lack for damage, which they don't. And they've got the, uh... They've got the Veil of Discord now, too, to go along he with home. it. And okay, the setup for this fight might actually be good. He, I, 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 he's gonna be able to spot out some of these heroes. They jump forward, already get his time roll. That's gonna be no Oracle Ultimate to be able to save Old Chicken. And he's being targeted down by the OT. This means he's gonna fall so quickly. The Embodied Shield is just not enough against the Finger of Death. Lonham, yes, he's healing up, but he's doomed. He can't help his allies. So they leave him for last, he's the dessert, as the rest of E-Home was consumed by Secret for dinner. 18 minutes in, and Secret seem on the verge of just being able to go high ground. I am 25 to 9 already, Secret. E-Home already had the same idea, they immediately smoke into each other, but you notice that this time around, Universe, right on top of things, he immediately ults the Oracle with absolutely no time. That yeah. team fight synergy from start to finish, Arteezy gets rid of Lon M in that fight too. <laughs> oh no! Wow, that's 85 hints. Good lord, why Arteezy? Hey, you made an extremely good point on the on the case of Ab Abaddon with the uh, borrowed time and how Arteezy just loves stealing all his intelligence. His hey, secret just looks so on top of things. They try and get some harassment shuriken damage, but it's not much, Lon M. He's even going for the deny, they actually jump in now with Old Eleven. Oh, they actually get the toss back, but there is the imprisonment save, and Old Eleven, he may be dropped here from Arteezy. He comes in, Eternal Levy misses the Sonic Wave on Old Eleven, but he hits the rest of E-Home, allowing Arteezy to be able to try up here and take one. The Death Prophet goes down, and he's coming back with life number two. E-Home regrouping now, wondering whether or not they can initiate, but Eternal Levy, he says, you want to initiate? I'll initiate on you instead, forcing E-Home back to the fountain while Secret casually take that range Rex on their way out. 27 to 9. I thought that last score was going to be rough, but this one's even going to leave. Oracle Ultimate, is that even going to be enough to save? Arteezy hits so damn hard, he's going to be able to take over 11 even if Oblanum doesn't drop. Barely keeps himself alive underneath the fountain. And they're just being beaten back right now, and Ehome, they just don't have heroes that can punish this kind of aggression. Like, they're diving them nearly to their fountain, and still nothing's being done about it. Puppy even buying a hood for himself at this point. Not even really caring about the lack of item efficiency. Last game, Seeker really took their time to make sure they had the biggest net worth lead they could before they went high ground. This time around, they're not dropping a beat. They keep on going. As the cooldown's already back up, the Doom placed on Lonham, and the team will be able to take one of those racks. 
but they have to back out now. This is where Ehome really have to catch something, but again, time and time again, we keep saying they have no catch. They don't have the disables. They don't have anything to stop Secret from retreating. Is that a new trend we're gonna see now from, from Secret that they've uh, discovered this Hood of Defiance and the active where it creates a spell that spells you? Oh, I saw, I saw, I saw he was just gonna be a scouting pile of die. Leads him right into their trap. Will be able to provide the disabled test. The finger of death ready to go. Shuriken stops it for a second, but a second is not enough. I saw, I saw, he loses his life and now Ehom. Tree to the high ground. Lonham, his ultimate pop now. He is exposed. E Homer gonna try and turn this one around. Old 11 sitting on the side here. They've been silenced up Eternal Envy. They're gonna go for it, but the Avalanche misses. He managed to get the plank away. And now they turn towards Puppy instead. But again, the movement speed. He just runs right through him. See you later. Lonham dropping lower and lower. Doesn't have the ultimate to be able to save him. Then we provide some of the heals though. But it's gonna be Arteezy, the heavy hitter. He's gonna have his blink dagger ready to go soon. Blinks the wrong direction. Doesn't get an imprisonment on anybody. Slow down. Old Eleven jumps in, tries to grab Eternal Envy, but it's just not enough. Old Chica to be targeted here by Arteezy. They don't have any disabled to stop him. He just keeps right clicking away. He doesn't give a damn about the Oracle Ultimate, as Old Chicken will be able to survive thanks to the Spirit Siphon and the heals during that Oracle Ult. But that is still more. More spells on cooldown for Ehome as Old Eleven tries to go back in, ends up getting juked out. Botic Shields will be able to provide him some saves. Puppy's just trying to close that gap though with the Infernal Blade, turns on the Lanham instead. The imprisonment goes out. Ice 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 comes back here, but Primal War taken out two shot by Arteezy. Ehome, even underneath their fountain. They can only, only take so much. Secrets seem to have an unlimited amount of damage. They take it a second later, Brags. The only thing that's stopping them from being able to get Megas at this point is that they're still a tier one at the bottom lane. It's gotta be such a frustrating game to play for the E-Home roster as well, just seeing the enemy run around them. They're just running circles around them. Doombringer and Queen of Pain especially in, 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 in the start of that fight. Just taunt them. Not really sure what E-Home is supposed to do in this situation. Things aren't getting easier. They're staying in this game so far just to try to keep their tournament hopes alive. Maybe hope that uh, Secret just gets way too over aggressive, but Arteezy found another pickoff. Old 11 was too far forward. Arteezy jumps forward, grabs him with the imprisonment. They're gonna try and run him down, and they get him in the end. Arteezy reads it. The OD ultimate drops, finishes off Old 11. And there goes their primary initiator. There also goes their primary disabler. And Ehom looking a little bit bewildered as to how they're gonna be able to stop this final push of Team Secret. And it just doesn't seem possible. Puppy casually runs in. Case on him out of the fight entirely with the Doom. Arteezy keeps running forward. He saved one hero. He's going to target the next. Takes out the Oracle. Now turns his attention onto Old Chicken. Waiting him on him as his ultimate's going to end up going down soon. Another GG. This time 33 to 9. Make it 34. And a casual 35 pickup before the throne explodes as Secret. They drop down the loot just back in nice and early. People were rather surprised. But now against Ehome, they take two of the most dominant games yet. That series lasted altogether, maybe an hour, draft included. It just felt like they got absolutely rolled here from the pick phase As on. As they got absolutely rolled here. I mean, this was just fast. Not a whole lot that E-Home could do, even with the success of Ice 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 roaming around. That bounty hunter was incredibly effective. We saw that he was able to get the level 6 early on, but they just couldn't turn it into...